Hi, Mom. It's Brandon. Yeah, Haley's doing fine. Um, listen, I, I need to talk to you about something. No, 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 no. It's not about that. It's uh, something else, something um, important. Thanks. Uh, it's going well. Um, I think I have a story to film now if my research adds up. Listen, I gotta go. I have some work to finish up before I see you tomorrow. Yeah, absolutely. Please take a seat. Sure. I really appreciate your input and your help on this. And no problem, man. Anything I can do to help? Absolutely. Right, right. Why don't you start by introducing yourself? Okay. Um, oh, oh, do you want me to look at you? Or no, I just you don't even worry about the camera. You can just talk to me. Sure. Uh, so, my name is Victor. Uh, Victor Hughes. Um, my name is Mary Sterling, um, um, the mother of Nathan Powell. Um, I was a good friend of Nathan's before he disappeared. I, I lived down the street from Nathan and his mother, but that was in the late 1980s. So. My son was five when he was kidnapped, was, so that's what we believe. He wasn't the type to run away. There just isn't a day or time that I don't think about him since he disappeared. Nathan was a Nathan was a good kid, you know. Even though I was only eight when he when he disappeared, we had a lot of good times together. And then one day he wasn't there anymore. I definitely missed the kid. It, it kind of makes me wonder, you know, what he would have been like today. So. Here's the picture of um, Nathan playing in the park. And, and here's one of him and I, he was eating ice cream. Victor, could you tell me what happened that day when Nathan disappeared? Yeah, I, 
I remember it like it was yesterday, <laughs> even though I was only eight. Uh, so let's see. Um, Nathan and I were playing in his mother's apartment, um, and then we asked if we can go outside to the park. So it was, it was in March, it was a weekend of March in 1988. And it was pretty warm outside for, for that time of year. And so Nathan and I just walked outside down the street to the park. Just the two of you? Yeah, it was just the two of us. When we got to the park, we sat down, and you know, we do what kids our age do. We started playing around with our toy cars, and um, we must have been playing for about 10 or 15 minutes or so. No one else was out there? No, Nathan uh, was playing with his friend Victor. They were playing outside. It was not unusual for them to be playing outside. Kids in the neighborhood would be running around all the time. It was quite normal. Um, I was home in the house and uh, what about Nathan's father? Where was he in all of this? Jeffrey. He died some years ago. Um, you know, divorced before Nathan was three and the marriage didn't last more than two years. He's always lying and cheating. Never around. But he was good to Nathan. So we agreed that he could see Nathan every other week. But I didn't know he was coming that day. So he came over to your house to see Nathan? came to take him for a baseball game or something. Um, he didn't tell me he was coming. So what happened then when he showed up that afternoon? Oh, Nathan and Victor went out to play and Jeffrey came in and we, we argued. I said, you have to leave the house. <laughs> Why are you here? I came for Nathan. I've got tickets to the Yankees game. No. What? I can't take my own son out for a day, is that it? Not today. You get to keep him seven days a week, and I only get to see him once out of those seven days. What are you trying to do? You want to take my son away from me, is that it? You didn't tell me earlier. You should have called. I don't think I need permission to see my own son. Okay? If you think you're the only one who's gonna rage, I don't know what the hell you're thinking! Okay, you know what? You are really, really incredible. You walk in here whenever you want to, yeah. thinking you can do whatever you like. All right. When the fact is, I'm the one who takes care of him. Mm -hmm. I make sure he gets to school, I cook for him, I'm working two jobs. Mm -hmm. What do you do? You take him to some stupid baseball game. Well, maybe Nathan should be living with me instead then. That, that is a joke. Okay. Right. You can't take care of yourself. And what happened after Jeffrey left? Well, I didn't see him until I was outside uh, with Nathan. Um, like I said, Nathan and I were at the park. And I, I do remember it pretty well. So, like I said, we were playing with our toy cars for about 10 to 15 minutes or so uh, before I went back to his mother's apartment. Uh, and when I went back to the apartment, that's when I saw his dad. Well, all I can remember is that he seemed pretty angry. And I, I don't think he saw me, or at least he didn't acknowledge me. He, he just stormed off. So, you left Nathan alone outside? Yes. I mean, 
I can't believe I I can't believe I did that, man. Honestly, to this day, I still kick myself for that decision. I only thought I was gonna be going for a few minutes, you know, to go back to his mother's apartment to get the baseball. I mean, that's one of the biggest regrets I have, is leaving him out there by himself. And what happened when you came back outside? I, I didn't see Nathan anymore. What did you think happened to him? At the time, I thought his dad just took him out. I mean, his, his dad did that pretty often, so it wasn't something that was unusual to me. So what did you do then? I just went home. Simple as that. completely exhausted, drained. So I sat down and I was just thinking about Jeffrey, my mom, Nathan. Victor came in to get something, a baseball or something, and then he left. I forgot they were outside and I, I just, I guess I fell asleep for about an hour or so. I woke up, it was two o'clock. And the house was empty, quiet. At that moment, I felt so alone. See that that Nathan was in the house, but yeah, I, at first I, I didn't worry, but then I realized there was so much time that had passed between when I had seen him, so I ran outside. I'm sure the police suspected Jeffrey. Am I correct to say that? He was the obvious one who, who, who would have taken Nathan. But when the police interviewed him, they came up empty-handed. Jeffrey's story was that he went to his friend's house after we argued. When he left, he saw Nathan and Victor playing in the street, but he didn't speak to them. The police were at a dead end. It was as if Victor, what can you tell me about your time outside playing with Nathan? Were there any passerbys or? Uh, well, well, like I said, there, there weren't that many people out uh, that day. But I do remember a few people specifically. Uh, there was this, this man jogging. And he stopped, you know, a bit of ways from us. Probably to catch his breath or something. And there is also this this woman. She sat on a on a bench near us. 
I actually walked past her when I was on the way back to Nathan's mother's apartment to get the baseball. The last thing I saw her doing was uh, she was pulling this stuffed animal out of her purse. It had like these red and green like button eyes. Hi, Mom. It's Brandon. Listen, I, I need to talk to you about something. 